let's mod a PS3. We're going to be installing custom firmware using this guide on PSX Place. You're going to need a PlayStation 3 compatible with custom firmware, and you can find that information on the bottom of your system, as well as a flash drive. First, we're going to go to Rufus.ie, and we're going to download the tool. Then we'll plug the flash drive in the computer, and with the flash drive selected, we're going to set it to non-bootable, MBR, we're going to set it to FAT32 with a cluster size of 32 kilobytes, and then we'll run the tool. Then inside the flash drive, we're going to create a couple folders. We're going to create this PS3 folder, then inside the PS3 folder, we're going to create an update folder. Then at this PSX Place link that you'll find in the video description, we're going to find the hybrid firmware. We're going to right click on it and press save link as. And then we'll press save to download the hybrid firmware. And if you have issues downloading the file for whatever reason, go into your downloads and you're going to press this button here and download and secure file. Once the file is done downloading, we're going to rename it to ps 3 updatepup On the flash drive, we're going to navigate to the update folder and we're going to drag and drop the ps 3 updatepup to the flash drive. Then we'll take the flash drive out of the computer and we'll plug it into the PS3. Then on the PlayStation 3, we're going to navigate to settings, system update, update via storage media, and it should detect the flash drive. If it sees the hybrid firmware, we're going to go ahead and select yes. And then it's going to start installing the hybrid firmware. Now, if for whatever reason this doesn't work, go ahead and plug in your PS3 controller over a mini USB cable, and we're going to press and hold the power button until it shuts off the system. And then we're going to press and hold the power button until we hear two beeps from the system, which will boot it into safe mode. And once we have the controller connected, we're going to go down to system update here at the bottom, and we're going to press start and select at the same time to start installing the firmware. Once the hybrid firmware is installed, we're going to go to system settings. We're going to scroll up until we see automatic updates, and we're going to make sure they're turned off. Then we're going to scroll down to display what's new, and we're going to turn it off as well. Now connect your PS3 to the internet, either via Wi-Fi or an Ethernet connection, and then we're going to launch the internet browser. From here, we're going to press triangle on the controller. We're going to go to tools, and we're going to go ahead and delete everything we see at the bottom here. Then we're going to go back to tools, and we're going to select home page. Then we're going to select use blank page, and we'll press OK. And then we're going to press circle and X to exit out of the browser. Then we'll open up the browser again. Then we're going to press start so we can input a URL. And we're going to input https colon forward slash forward slash autos tools dot github dot io forward slash flash writer. And we'll press start to go to the website. Now we're going to press select and add to bookmarks. Next, we're going to make sure the flash drive is in the far right USB port, which is USB port 000. Now, if you have to use one of the ones uh, a little further to the left, basically every time you go one over to the left is one notch up. So if we select that, we can see what I mean here, which uh, this one here would be the uh, leftmost port. Now, based off of which PlayStation 3 you're going to be modding here, we're going to select either NOR or NAND. And I'm going to have this checker linked in the uh, video description below here, but we can see that for fat models, these ones are NAND and these ones are NOR. All the slim models are going to be using NOR and the super slims, well, we just don't use it because that's not compatible with CFW. And since I'm doing this on a PS3 slim, I'm going to select NOR. And if it finds all variable offsets, I'm going to press run checks. And if all goes well, it's going to download this flash 491 file and when it completes we're going to press circle and it's going to start the next step in the process and if it all passes it's going to give us the option to dump nor flash memory which i'm going to select once this completes we're going to leave the browser open and we're going to take the flash drive out of the ps3 and plug it into the computer so the next thing we need to do is download cfw which you can find a link again in the video description below we're going to scroll down here and we're going to find this uh download link which is through mega and inside the mega folder we're going to see the latest releases i'm going to go there and i'm going to download pex just because it has a uh, the feature set that I want specifically. And while most folks are probably going to want to download this uh, base version here, I'm going to download the overclocking version because I've repasted the system and I plan to use uh, enhanced fan speeds to keep the temps down. And this will also boost the performance of the system a bit when navigating the XMB, when playing games, and just make a better overall experience. Now with the flash drive plugged into the computer, we're going to see this PS3 flash dump. We're going to go ahead and back that up onto the computer. And we're going to retain that file just in case anything ever goes wrong in the future. Next, we're going to go to the Pi PS3 to GitHub, and we're going to see this file here. We're going to left click on it, and on the right side, we're going to see this download raw file button. We're going to left click on it, then we're going to create a new folder, and we're going to take all the files from inside the Pi PS3 zip, and we're going to extract it to it. And then we're going to take the PS3 flash dump, and we'll put it inside of that folder we created. And then we're going to take the PS3 flash dump, and we're going to drag and drop it onto this uh, drag and drop file here, and it's going to open up a new window, and it's going to check the integrity of the dump, and then it's going to give you all this info saying, hey, it's a okay, uh, unless it's not, and then go back and uh, make another the dump. And the only thing that's really worth going and verifying is go ahead and scroll up until you see uh, checking core OS region, and you're just going to make sure that these strings here are exactly the same. If they are different for whatever reason, go ahead and reflash hybrid firmware, 
do another dump and just verify and then we'll proceed. And once all that is verified, go ahead and take your uh, PS3 flash dump, back it up somewhere safe, and we'll just retain that file again just in case anything ever goes wrong. Now inside of the flash drive, we're going to go back to the PS3 update folder. We're going to see our original PS3 update pup, and we're going to go ahead and delete it. And using a program like 7-Zip, we're going to open up the CFW archive that we downloaded earlier. We're going to go to the PS3 folder, update. We're going to grab this PS3 update.pup, and we're going to drag and drop it into the flash drive. Once it's done transferring, we're going to put the flash drive back into the PS3, and then we can run the next patch in the browser. And if it says patch operation is successful, we're going to go ahead and press circle and exit out of the browser. And then we're going to power off the system and then power it back on. And if the system reboots successfully, that means that the patch was applied successfully and we can move on to the next step. We're going to go back to settings and system update and select it. We'll press update via storage media and it should see the custom firmware we want to install. We're going to press X to start the process. We'll press right, we'll press accept, and we'll turn off the system automatically after the update and press start. And again, if we run into any issues here, go ahead and do the uh, safe mode method that we showed earlier. For example, I actually had to go through the safe mode method when doing this part. And after I connect a wireless controller, it's gonna go ahead and start installing the update. I'll press next, I'll press accept, and I'll press X. And we're just gonna let it sit here while it installs the update. And after the install is complete, it's gonna boot into the custom firmware, which we can confirm by seeing these extra folders right here. And again, because I'm doing the overclocking build, I'm gonna go to the network settings here, go down to custom firmware tool, and I can go down to the fan settings here and I can set up my own custom fan settings. And for my use case, I'm going to go to dynamic fan control here and I'm going to set it to 65 degrees Celsius. And at this point, you can get it set up to run all kinds of different homebrew, get your backup set up. If you want to check some of that out, I got previous videos uh, in my short speed that go over all kinds of different topics. But if you found this valuable, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you guys in the next one.